Hey everyone, welcome to part 80 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we'll add money to our game. So if I try to sell an item, as you can see that here we are showing the money that we have. And then if we sell this item for $50, it'll get added to the total money that we have. Alright, so let's look at how to create this. You can support the making of this series by becoming a Patreon and get some cool rewards for it like access to the complete project files of the series, exclusive tutorials that are not covered on YouTube and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So first. I'll create a wallet script where we can store the player's money. So in scripts, inside the gameplay folder, I'll create a new c -sharp script called wallet. Alright, let me open it up in Visual Studio and get rid of the default code. So in this script, we'll have a float variable to store the money. and I'll just make it a serialized field so that we can easily set the starting money of the player from the inspector. Okay. So next, I'll also create a property to expose it. So next, we need functions to add money to the wallet and take money from the wallet. So first I'll create a public function called add money. So this will take the amount of money that we want to add in the parameter. And in this function, all we have to do is increment our money with the amount. All right. So next I'll create a similar function called take money. So this function will decrement the amount from the money variable. Okay, so let's go to Unity and add the script to the player's game object. Alright, let me search for the wallet script. And then I'll set the money to be 1000 by default so that we can easily test buying items and all. Alright, so next we need to create the UI for the wallet where we can show the total money that we have. So let me go inside the UI canvas prefab and let me just enable the inventory UI just so that we'll get a reference when creating the wallet UI. Okay, so I'll add a new image to the UI canvas and I'll name it wallet UI and then I'll change the image to image of the dialog box. Okay. So next let me place it over here and I'll also change its width to something higher like 200 or 220 and I also want to reduce the height a little so I'll make it something like 80. Alright. So next we need to create a text inside the wallet UI where we can show the money that we have. Alright, so I'll create a new text and I'll call this money text. Okay, so I'll change its font to orange kit and change the font size to 40. And then I'll change the alignment to center, both horizontally and vertically, just like we do for all our text objects. Okay. And then I want to make the text as big as the wallet UI. So I'll hold Alt and then I'll make it stretch in both sides. Alright, that looks good. And let me also just give a placeholder text over here. So now let's create the script for the wallet UI. So inside scripts, 
inside the UI folder, I'll create a new script called wallet UI. Okay. So let me get rid of the default code. And in this script, first we need to create a reference to the money text. So let me create a serialized field variable for that. And by the way, in order to use text, we have to import the unity engine.ui namespace. So let me do that. So next I'll create functions to show and close the wallet UI. All right, so let me create a public function called show. So in this function, first we have to enable the wallet UI game object. So I'll say game object dot set active true. And then we should set the current money that we have in the money text. So I'll create another function for that. I'll call this set money text. So to get the current money that we have, we have to get a reference to the wallet script. So I'll actually make the wallet script a singleton so that we can easily access it from other scripts. So let me create a public static instance of it. All right. And then in the awake function, I'll assign the instance. All right. So now from the wallet UI, we can get the money from wallet.instance.money. And we have to set it to the money text. So let me do that. All right. And I'll just add a dollar at the start. So this should set the money for us. So let's call this function right after we show the wallet UI. All right. So next, I'll create a public function to close the wallet UI. Okay, so in here, we just have to disable the wallet UI game object. So I'll call game object dot set active false. So next, we should also update the money text whenever the money changes in the wallet, right? So we can create an event in the wallet script that will be fired whenever the money changes. And then we can make the wallet UI listen to that event. So here I'll create an event called on money changed. All right. And by the way, to use action, we have to import the system namespace. So let me go ahead and do that. And now we should fire this event whenever the money is changed. Right. So let's fire this event from the add money and take money function. Okay. Let me also do it from the take money function. So now we can make the wallet UI listen to this event and update the money text whenever the event is fired. So in the start function, I'll subscribe to the on money changed event of the wallet. All right. And when the event is fired, we just have to call the set money text function. Right. So let me attach the set money text function here. So now the wallet UI will be automatically updated when the money changes in the wallet. So next, let's actually show the wallet UI when we are selling an item from the shop. So from the sell item function, we need to show the wallet UI from here. But first, we need to get a reference to the wallet UI. So let me create a serialized field for that. All right. And now from here, when we are selling an item, we can show the wallet UI by calling wallet UI dot show function. Okay. And at the end of this function, 
once we are done with the selling, we can close it by calling volatui.close. All right. So now when we sell an item, it should show the money that we have. So let's go to Unity and test this. So first we need to assign the wallet UI script to the wallet UI game object. All right. And then we need to assign a reference to the money text. So let me drag and drop it over here. And then in the shop controller script, we need to assign a reference to the wallet UI. So let me also assign that. Okay. So now let's go ahead and run the game. Okay, the wallet UI is shown by default. We don't want that. So let's disable the wallet UI so that it won't be shown by default. All right. So now it's not shown by default, but it should be shown when we sell an item, right? So let me go ahead and try to sell an item. Okay. So now you can see that when we select an item to sell, it shows the total money that we have in the wallet UI. And then if we sell the item, okay, the money is not increasing after we sold the item. So that's because we forgot to do one thing. So when we sell an item, we should add the selling price to the wallet, right? We have even added a to do comment for that in the previous video. So let's actually do it now. So to add the selling price to the wallet, I'll call the add money function of the wallet. Okay. So here I'll say wallet dot instance dot add money. And for the amount, I'll pass the selling price. So now it should add the selling price to our wallet when we sell an item. So let's go ahead and test that. All right. So now if I sell this portion, you can see that we received $50 for that and it was added to our wallet. All right. So that's working fine. And by the way, let's also test the other case. So if we decide not to sell and select no, then the price shouldn't be added to the wallet. So let's test that. So yeah, it's still 1050. So it wasn't added again. So we have implemented a wallet where we can store the player's money. So I'll stop the video here. And in the next video, I'll implement the option to sell more than one item by using account selector. All right. So if you think this video is helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. That'll really help me out. So I'll see you in the next video.